All right, guys, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. This is a very, very different video. I'm kind of going to go over the design process a little bit with you. This particular pond, we're going to actually draw the whole thing out. Now, I know this patio, the way this is drawn in, is not exact at all. <laughs> I'm looking at this camera. This particular pond, we're gonna actually draw the whole thing out, and I hate drawing the stuff out. Actually, I don't hate it. I actually really enjoy the drawing and everything out and busting out the colored pencils. The part I hate is it usually doesn't help the customer understand, visualize, give them any perspective at all on what we're actually gonna do because a drawing like this, this is a front yard. Here's the house. These are columns to the front porch. These are the stairs coming down. They wanted an idea of where the water feature would sit inside of this new layout I gave them. They had kind of a sweeping walkway that came up to the front of their house here and they wanted to change that. So I said, all right, I can sketch it up. I'm gonna have to charge you obviously for sketching it. But we came up with this design. So they kind of do this zigzag type walk up to the front with some seat walls and little resting areas. This is about 60, 70 some feet long. And the water feature is illustrated right here. So does this actually help you understand what we're building? This is three different urns. The little red spots are lights. It really doesn't help the customer visualize at all what we're doing. What I prefer doing, what we do 99.9% .9 of the time, when I go out and design a water feature, I use a garden hose or a thick cotton rope and I'll lay the pond out and get the homeowner involved with the shape. Like, so we'll play around with the hose or that or that rope kind of lay it out giving us a visual of the shape of the pond which is so much more accurate than anything I could possibly draw and shows them exactly the scale of where it's gonna sit inside of their yard when I draw this out on a plat of survey if this patio right in here is slightly off compared to what's actually in the backyard then the whole drawing is gonna be off and the whole design is gonna be off and I know this patio based off of their plat of survey isn't exactly the way the patio sits in the backyard, but it'll help with the association. The other reason I like using the garden hose or the can of spray paint is nobody would know off of a drawing like this that this is 80 some feet long and that this is 12 feet wide by 15 feet wide here. But for this one, again, it's a homeowner's association. They also really wanted the drawing because she wants to try to figure out where she's gonna put the plants. We're gonna do this in about a year from now. She had a list of like a stone Swiss pine, a crimson queen maple, I think a dragon eye pine, a weeping hemlock or something, kind of more of a Japanese inspired uh, landscape. So it gives her an entire year to kind of figure out where she wants to put. So anyways, let's get right into it. Just know that I don't normally do this. So the drawings can be important sometimes, especially when you're dealing with a village, especially if you're dealing with a homeowner's association or a customer that absolutely needs it. But a garden hose and a can of spray paint is 99% more accurate than any drawing I could ever use and usually helps the customer visualize it that much more. Here we go, let's do this drawing. So the customer gave me a plat of survey. This is the house. This is an enclosed back porch area. This is their garage. This is their existing stone patio in here. First thing I look at is the scale of everything. It says one inch equals 20. I double check that to see if that's accurate and it's clearly not. It's off a little bit. It's never gonna be right on because we printed this and when you print it, it's not to scale with what was originally drawn. So I have to rescale this thing and figure out what scale I wanna use. And I think we're gonna go, I guess it's gonna be a 3 16 scale. Yeah, we'll go 316. So this says I have on here roughly a 24-ish by 16 foot patio. It looks like it's six feet off of the garage here and six feet off of the garage here. So there's two ways to do it. Now I could come over the top of this and just say, hey, the pond is gonna be somewhat into here like so waterfall here. The challenge is the scale of this thing is really, really small. So what I need to do is now take this scale and translate it to my paper over here. So I've gone ahead and already laid out where that back porch is. So here's that back porch. This space right here is this concrete block area that's covered. So again, that's this. 
And then here's that brick garage. And then I want to take my 3 16 scale and convert it over to quarter inch scale because that's what I'm working with here, this piece of graph paper. So we said we were about six feet off of here. So one, two, three, four, five, six-ish feet here and six feet this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, six feet up here. What did we say? It was like 16 by 24. So if I count this way, I should be somewhere in there. I need it to go to here and then 16 this way. So somewhere in here. And now I'm just gonna kinda, I could go in and really fine tune all of these little curves and stuff, but I'm just gonna kinda freehand it. So let's see if we can get close. This looks like it curves back in this way. We have this 10 foot easement right here. So if I came off the edge of my paper 10 feet, uh, there's four, eight, nine, 10. I draw a line somewhere in here. Then we know my patio comes right up to the easement line. So let's look at that here. And then we just got kind of this nice swoop. And then this curves back down into that concrete block area here. This little kind of peninsula thing here. I know there's a big evergreen over here, which isn't gonna affect the location of my pond at all or my waterfall, but they did have a lilac, and the lilac was her mom's lilac, I believe. So she had transplanted that from her mother's house, brought it here. I think it's a pretty rare variety of lilac. I'm not sure what it is, but 100% we couldn't move that. So I do have the locations on my video that I took, and we'll go over those in a second to locate that. So let's check out the video. There it is. And on the video, I have little notes. I usually have some measurements, some things that are important to them. And I do remember them saying something about a lilac or something that sat back over in here someplace. So let's just see what the video says and if there's anything else we need to know in here. All right guys, we're out at the Adams. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty awesome pond. It's just gonna fit in here so great. They're gonna get rid of this big spruce tree. We'll move the viburnum for them. The swing mirror may not go. Um, the biggest thing we have to remember is that lilac tree is about 15 feet from here to there and about seven feet, eight feet off of the fence. So when I do my drawing, 15 feet from here, seven to eight feet off of there, they're gonna send me a survey. We have a nine foot pond that comes from here to here, right into this curve. We're gonna take out some of these, do our clean wall inside of here, cantilever that patio out over it. And then I have about 16 feet from this side to this side with a beach, a little bird loving beach over in here. And then we're gonna put a price on to do the infinity edge type look with about a thousand gallon tank. Uh, we'll look to see what access is like, but one way or another, we're gonna come through a fence in the back. Every time we're done, we put it back up though, just to keep privacy. All right, so 15 feet from here, 15 feet from here, and seven feet from here. So if we count out seven feet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we're in quarter inch someplace that 15 foot mark has to fall on that line. So then we take our scale. And we want to be 15 feet off. So zero, one, two, three, four, right? So we put this right on the 15. There's the 15, 14, 15. And then we line this up with that line. And that lilac sits someplace right around here. So here is the lilac. Now we can come in here. We want to be nine feet of this area. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, you know, so on and so on. There's eight, there's nine. We know my pond is about that. That's as far as the pond wants to go. So someplace in here. And then we said 16 feet. So then let's just figure out where 16 feet fits in here. We knew we wanted to put a beachy type area over in here. So let's bring, and we know that spruce tree's going. So we have a little bit of space to come this way. And I don't want to mess around with that pond going anywhere inside this easement, right? Because if it goes in the easement, somebody later could come out and say something. Not that they ever will, like literally never, ever, ever will they come out and say something, but they could. So let's just make sure we don't get in any trouble that way. Let's go here. 
and then the beach can go a little bit into the easement. So we've got a line here and a line here. Now look at this. So I've got my lilac marked. I've got my nine feet off of here and then I have my 16 foot area. So what I like to do is draw kind of this like invisible rectangle. And then as long as I leave my pond, the curves of all my pond inside of this box, I know that the liner that I spec out for a nine by 16 foot pond will be okay. The second one of these things sweeps out into here. Now my pond becomes three or four feet bigger. So now it would be 12 foot pond, right? And that's not what we agreed on. We agreed on a nine by 16. So now I want to give it some shape. We know the lilacs here. I need to bring, I want a waterfall that's going to start someplace like over in here. And I knew I wanted the waterfall somewhere near this lilac because as it grew, it would kind of come up and over the berm. But I'm going to have to drop in a couple boulders to protect this lilac. So my biofalls, I'm actually kind of doing this backwards. The biofalls is gonna sit someplace like in here area, giving me at least three feet of soil between the edge of the biofalls and this wall. The reason I want that soil is because I need this space for landscaping. Even though this lilac's gonna hang out up and over this space, I still want some room for some hostas and some ground covers, whatever. <laughs> you guys know some plants, Yugo pines and hillside creepers, whatever, right? All kinds of different stuff. So waterfalls usually then fall in into a cove in the pond. So let's put a cove kind of over here. Let's just go this, this comes like this. And I'm drawing super light, so I apologize right now if you can't see it, but the reason I like to go light is in case I have to erase something and change some curves around. I'm gonna put this cool little like peninsula, which kind of mimics the shape of this. Right, so I come in like so, and come over here like this. If you remember the video, we're gonna bring that pond right up into this curve. This pond's actually gonna kinda come like this, like my excavated area will come like that, but they don't need to see that for the drawing. And then this comes like this, this comes like this. All right, so let me make this a little darker so you guys can see it. So I've got nine feet from my furthest two points and I have 16 feet from my furthest two points. Now we knew that waterfall was gonna sit someplace like right in here. So I'm gonna draw in my biofalls and then we'll get like one, two, let's go to the drop this way. So my waterfalls are usually illustrated with the beginning of a curve, no different than this one. And then I connect these kind of together. The other thing I remember is there being a lot of grass this way. And so here's my biofalls, like so. I've got a berm that comes out flat three feet this way. This way I wanted to bring it out probably a little bit more than three feet. Just about finished. We've got the house, we have the existing patio. I've colored everything in. Again, God, this is as much fun as this was to draw all this stuff. It takes me like a half an hour to an hour to do all this. It takes me more time to actually lay everything out, rescale what's off the platter survey onto this. Here's the waterfalls. So waterfalls illustrated by little blue arrows that kind of come down in between some existing boulders, uh, big plant backdrop. 
in here so to really frame that waterfall out so when you look this way across the patio from inside the house you're not looking to the vast space back behind the yard this kind of creates a wall which creates a room which then makes these waterfalls feel that much bigger but here's the waterfalls here's their existing lilac these are jets pushing water out of this area otherwise this would be a very dead area over in here so here's some jets here's that bird beach area we've got our 9 by 16 foot pond our existing patio another bird beach and then here's that vanishing edge waterfall coming down this way so a lot going on in a small space but i don't even know what the butt is hopefully it helps the homeowners association hopefully it helps our customer visualize it that much better in their space i don't think it will i still think garden hose and spray paint is king because it shows exactly what we're going to do but it does look pretty <laughs> hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. Tell me what you like. Do you like seeing the drawings? Maybe I'll do more drawings if you'd like to see it. That would drive Greg, the pond guy, insane. But maybe I'll do a few more if you guys like seeing it, like seeing more of the design. Does it help illustrate more of the design rather than the garden hose? You tell me the difference and uh, we'll keep doing this. Hey guys, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your children, tell your parents, tell your cousins, tell everybody about Team Aquascape and we'll keep doing this. Like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.